voltage gated channels are drawn here, ligand gated channels are drawn over here. Our next question is what happens when ions do move? And the answer is that the voltage of the membrane changes. Take you down here to the cell model. Basically point out what's going to happen if sodium does come into the cell. Sodium is positively charged and if it's allowed inside the cell it's going to bring that positive charge. It's going to make that voltage of the membrane go more positive. A little bit harder to see is if potassium leaves, it's going to take its positive with it. It's going to make the outside of the cell more positive, which means the inside of the cell is going to be more negative. So when potassium leaves, it makes the inside of the cell more negative. So what we have here is the opportunity to change this voltage up to positive voltages and then back down to negative voltages. The ability to change voltage by letting sodium come in and raise your voltage and letting potassium leave to bring your voltage back down is the basis of cellular signaling. It's about as fast as a signal as you can create. It's not as fast as electrons, but these ions move pretty fast. And if you want to get some signal from one end of a neuron to another end of a neuron, changing the voltage is a pretty quick way to do it. Before we get into detail about these voltage changes and how you graph it out, I want to just get into a little bit more details of the different types of voltage-dependent channels. We have two different types of voltage-dependent channels. I mean, all over the body, you have different voltage-dependent channels. You have voltage-dependent calcium. You have different types of voltage-dependent sodium channels and different types of voltage-dependent potassium channels. And that's going to be important, especially when we get to cardiac function. But right now, we're going to talk about two types of channels, a voltage-dependent sodium channel and a voltage-dependent potassium channel. And they're very different as far as when they open. First of all, the voltage-dependent sodium channel is going to open at minus 55 millivolts. So to review, there's this positively charged gate that when the inside of the cell is minus 70 millivolt, this gate is going to be attracted to the inside of the cell and it's going to slide down and be closed. But if we move as little as 15 millivolts up to minus 55 millivolts, this gate is going to slide open and the channel is going to be open to let sodium come in. Kind of a unique feature of the voltage-dependent sodium channel is something called an inactivation plug. And this is going to swing in shortly after the channel is open, basically close all the sodium channels down. The voltage-dependent potassium channel is going to open at plus 30 millivolts. And when it gets to plus 30 millivolts, potassium is going to leave. So hopefully you've started to see the basis here of changing the voltage. Something's going to happen to get us from minus 70 millivolts up to minus 55 millivolts. Sodium channels are going to open, and sodium is going to start coming in. When that sodium comes in, it's going to raise the voltage even further. It's going to raise it all the way up to plus 30 millivolts. At that point, the inactivation plug is going to swing in and close the sodium channels. And the potassium channels are going to open. When the potassium channels are open, potassium is going to leave and bring our voltage back down to negative. So you have the mechanism here. Open up the sodium channel, get my voltage up to positive values, close that sodium channel, now open up the potassium channel and get my voltage back down. Formalize these voltage changes by graphing them. What we're going to do is we're going to graph membrane potential here. And some of the key membrane voltages are minus 70, minus 55, and plus 30. We're going to graph the changes in these voltages over time. And what we get is a figure that is called an action potential. Basically, we're going to start right here at rest, and this would be the situation when there's no rain right now. My umbrella neuron is not doing anything right now. It's at rest. Now, if something happens, you hear some raindrops on the roof or something like that. Something, and we're going to leave it as something right now, but we're going to clarify in a little bit. Something's going to get my voltage-dependent sodium channels up to minus 55. Now, when they open, they're all going to open, and they're going to bring the voltage up to plus 30. So that's why I have this figure here. The sodium channel is open and the potassium channel is closed. And this state is called depolarization. When we get to the top here, the inactivation plug is going to swing in. Hopefully you can see that right there. And the sodium channels are going to close. The potassium channels are going to open. And this is going to do something called repolarization, which means it's going to take our voltage back down negative. The potassium channels stay open a little too long, and that causes an undershoot, or it's also called a hyperpolarization. The sodium-potassium ATPase gets everything back in order, so it gets the sodium back out, potassium back in, and that brings our voltage back to minus 70. Something else to mention, though, are refractory periods. There's refractory periods in the action potential, and one is called an absolute refractory period, and one is called a relative refractory period. What refractory period means is it's hard to get another action potential. And that can be absolutely hard to get another action potential. And that's what the absolute refractory period is. You cannot get an action potential if you're already starting up on an action potential. 
basically what this comes down to is there's no super duper action potentials there's one size of action potential no matter where you go in the body you don't get big action potentials and small action potentials the way you actually code for something that's a simple touch or a really hard touch or something that's really painful basically the way you code for intensity is how fast the action potentials come not how big they are now again the reason that there is no super duper action potential is because once the sodium channels open they all open. There's none that lay in wait in case there's a bigger signal. They're all open. And so if they're all open, you can't open any more than all of them. And so you're always going to have the same signal. So once you've started up on an action potential, all the sodium channels are open. So you can't get a bigger action potential or you can't get another action potential in the middle of an action potential that's already occurring. Now once those sodium channels start to close and the potassium channels start to open, technically you can get another action potential. But it's really, really hard. That's why it's still called a refractory period. And the reason it's hard is mainly because those potassium channels are open. If we go down here to the model cell and we think about, well, to get our voltage back up, we have to have sodium coming in. But if the potassium channels are open and potassium is leaving, then it's a bit like trying to fill up the bathtub when the drain is open. You can do it, but you have to make sure that the water is coming into the tub faster than the water is leaving. So in this case, in the back to the cell, the sodium has to really, really be coming in. It has to be coming back in faster than normal because now it has to offset the fact that the potassium is leaving. So you can get another action potential once you've started down, but it has to be a super strong signal. And these are reserved for cases when you really, really need a lot of action potentials in a row. And if we go back to talking about how you code for intensity by the frequency of the action potentials, this means it's really hard to stack up the action potentials really, really close to give a really, really intense signal. But if you do, now you do have that super duper signal. Because not only have you stacked the action potentials close, but you've stacked them so close that more sodium is coming in than potassium is leaving. So you got that extra turn the dial up to 11 signal when you actually have such an intensity that the action potentials are right up next to each other and impeding on that relative refractory period. Now let's go down here to this lower left where I'm going to describe the two types of potentials. And this is where you really begin to understand what an action potential is. What an action potential is, is a potential that can move. And that's set up by the fact that you spread out voltage dependent channels. And in this little cartoon, I've got a voltage dependent sodium channel with sodium coming in. And if sodium comes in through that channel, it's going to spread to the next channel. And now that channel and the gate in that channel is going to say, I'm at a more positive voltage on the inside, so the gate's going to open. And now this channel is going to start letting sodium come in. Sodium's going to migrate over to this channel. This gate is going to sense that positive sodium on the inside. Say the membrane voltage is not minus 70 anymore, it's minus 55. So now that one's going to open. And you get this jumping from voltage-dependent channel to voltage-dependent channel. And that's really what an action potential is. And where that occurs in a neuron is right along the axon. So you have myelin in here. You have gaps in the myelin that are called nodes of Ranvier. And in those nodes of Ranvier, there's voltage and a sodium and potassium channels. So again, if sodium can come in here, this area is called the axon hillock. If sodium comes in here, it spreads. And it spreads to the next node of Ranvier, where there's a voltage and a sodium channel waiting. Sodium comes in, and it spreads to the next node of Ranvier, where there's a voltage and a sodium channel waiting. That sodium channel says it's not minus 70 anymore, it's minus 55, so I'm going to open and I'm going to let sodium come in. That sodium technically spreads in both directions, but the important direction is in this direction because now the sodium is, this sodium channel is going to sense that voltage change and it's going to open. I'm also going to bring back that inactivation plug, which we can look at in the cell model. Basically, that inactivation not only closes the sodium channel, but it keeps it closed, and it makes sure that the action potential travels in only one direction. So bringing in two things there, don't mean to be confusing, bringing in the action potential, which means things will jump down the axon in what's called saltatory conduction. And also, the reason we have that inactivation plug is it prevents the action potential from backing up the axon, basically going upstream. Because even though the sodium might flow back to the previous node of Ranvier, the sodium channels in that node of Ranvier are going to be inactivated. And again, this keeps the action potential going in one direction. The other type of potential is just a graded potential. In a graded potential, there aren't voltage-dependent channels to help propagate the signal. So when the sodium comes in, it just spreads around.